Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. I've got a fun little machining project for you today, but I also have amazing news. I've just launched the Blondie Hacks merchandise store at blondiehacks.com slash store. Longtime viewers know I'm a big fan of leather shop aprons. Well now you can buy the perfect thing for your creepy Quinn Dunkey Halloween costume and or cosplay. This is an all over print shirt, comes in men's and women's, and it's got my apron and my black undershirt printed right on there. And this is an all over print, which is super cool. What that means is it goes all the way around. I think this thing is hilarious. I hope you do too. Check it out, blondiehacks.com slash store. Here's our little machining project today. We're down under, under my mill. This is the table lock for the x-axis. There's actually two of them, one on each side. And uh, these are big aluminum locking handles designed for larger machines. And while this is a small machine, and thus you can see the problem, it in fact doesn't clear the y-axis slide. And in fact, through much of its motion, it's actually in the way. So this entire handle is just oversized for this machine. And so anytime you're moving the y-axis, you have to be thinking about where are both of these handles to make sure that, well, this doesn't happen. If you aren't paying attention and you snag it, it's pretty easy to bend it. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, what's actually happened is the mounting bolt inside here has bent and this whole mechanism, which is supposed to slide in and out so you can reposition the handle, uh, has uh, become seized up. And uh, well, this is now scrap. So what I'm gonna do is uh, make a new style of locking device, because as you can see over here on the other side, I've uh, temporarily replaced the second handle with a simple bolt, because frankly, uh, this amount of leverage finger tight is honestly all you need. This is a small machine and the cutting forces aren't that high. You absolutely do not need three inches of leverage on the table locks. So uh, what we're gonna do is make some uh, brass knobs, maybe like one, one and a half, two inch diameter. And uh, that'll also be nice because there'll be brass on the end instead of these guys, which are hardened. And I really don't like using hardened steel against my cast iron dovetails to lock them in place. It's actually pressing on the gibbs, but still, I don't like that hardened surface on my cast iron. So we're gonna make some little brass knobs and it'll be uh, just as good and uh, a lot more convenient. So I'll start by getting my copper soft jaws out of the way. You saw me make these in a previous video and I've got some 360 brass here that uh, the junk pile produced. I'm gonna cut off enough length for two of these knobs and you'll see how that'll help us here later on. Have you ever asked yourself, self, how can I show my love of the Blondie Hacks media empire without being all showy about it? Well, this t-shirt is your answer. The subtle corner logo will start conversations and signal your fine taste to the world all at once. Comes in women's and men's in lots of cool colors. BlondieHacks.com slash store. And we can chuck this guy up in the three jaw. This is a very simple part. Uh, we can make it all in one setup. So the three jaw is gonna serve us very well here. Now one issue with this bar stock that I'm using is it has quite a nasty bend in it. As you can see, look at the run out there. So uh, I'm gonna face it off even though it probably doesn't need it. But uh, you can see that I've got it pulled out to the final length that I want. So I'm facing it and then I'm gonna center drill it while it's pulled out like this. And uh, you gotta be a little bit careful uh, with the stick out uh, when doing this. But uh, what it does for us is it puts the center in the position where the stock is gonna be riding uh, with the bend in it. And because it's found its center out here with the bend in it, uh, it'll run without vibration and we can turn the bend right out of it, just like you would with a, a part that's out of concentric. And the ability to create concentricity as if from nowhere is really the magic power of the lathe. So uh, check out my video on concentricity for more about how that works. But now you can see we've got it running well with the center. There's no vibration, but you can see the run out on the surface. And so now I'm taking a series of light passes just on the end here to figure out how deep I have to go to get that bend out. And uh, once I've got a clean pass all the way around, then I can come back in and turn the full length at that depth. Now watch this chip action, it's gonna be really amazing. Make sure you're paying attention. Don't look away as this tool bit touches the work. Oh, marketing is terrible, isn't it? Anyway, 
It's not actually that exciting, pretty typical turning operation, but you can see as the bit moves across here, we're actually turning that bend right out of the work and we're left with a very true piece of stock. Now, of course, the cost we paid here for this is that we've had to take a fairly deep cut, and so I lost some of the diameter that I, that I wanted, so the diameter of my final uh, knob is not gonna be quite as high as I wanted, but that's okay, it's still gonna work. And now we can just blue up and mark the edge of the knob, and we gotta turn the shaft area where the threads are gonna be uh, down quite a bit. While we're doing this, I wanna talk a little bit about this tool bit that I'm using. That's one of the first tool bits that I ever ground, actually, and you can tell by how poorly made it is but uh, it actually works very well on brass. So it's got a very generous nose radius on it, and of course the top rake is flat like any tool designed for brass. And uh, it's also got a clearance angle cut on the back so I can get in close to the live center. And it also has a generous lead angle at the front. And uh, all of these things combine to make for a tool that leaves really quite excellent surface finishes. And because brass is so easy to turn, even with such a generous nose radius and fairly high tool pressure, I mean, this is practically a form tool, uh, I can still do 100 thou passes on, on this guy with no trouble at all. And then once I crank up the speed and uh, crank down the feed for the finishing pass, uh, I can get a very, very fine finish indeed. Now I've got the tool uh, mounted square in the tool post here, and I'm using the lead angle on it to create a nice bevel on the underside of the knob. That looks nice, but it's also functional. What that means is that when the knob is tightened all the way in, there's going to be clearance for your fingers between the knob and the, the milling machine table. You, uh, you gotta have some physical space there for the meat. And there's that finishing pass I talked about. You can tell when you've got a really fine surface finish on brass because it takes on kind of a golden color instead of the kind of matte yellow that it normally has after you machine it. So that uh, turned out really beautiful. Of course, it's overkill because we're going to be cutting threads on this, but, you know, it's still nice to have it. Thread on this needs to be M8 by 125, so I'm going for 311 thousandths, a few thou under 315, which is 8 millimeter, and that will do nicely. Real talk now, Blondie Hacks fans. In the distant future, when the great cat wars come, the boy cats are going to go off to fight, and the girl cats are going to take up the welders and the machine tools and the laser tank factories, and together, we will defeat whatever the new bad guys are called. This is Sprocket the Riveter, available in women's and men's. Lots of cool colors, every size imaginable. BlondieHacks.com slash store. Those extra few thou of clearance are uh, really helpful for thread cutting with a die. And I'm going to clean up the tool post here and get my chamfering tool in here now. And I'm going to chamfer the end of that, which helps the die get started. And uh, also is, well, it's pretty. Now let's just bask in this operation for a moment. Chamfering is immensely satisfying. I'll set up to cut the threads now. I'm using WD-40 as a cutting fluid. Since this is brass, it works quite well. And I'm using uh, this weird ratcheting tap wrench that I have. People always ask about this guy. There's a link to it down below if you want to buy one. But I use it because it uh, holds hex dies, and my metric dies happen to be hex dies. So with that thread cut, now we go back in and chamfer it again because the thread die chewed up our chamfer on the end. And that looks very nice. And now we're going to knurl the knob itself. So I bring in the scissor type knurling tool, lots and lots of cutting fluid. And I snug up the wheels before starting the machine so that the wheels find their timing and then start to tighten them in. Remember all those times you were drinking a hot beverage and wished that the logo of some weird YouTube channel would appear as if from nowhere? Such a common problem. We'll worry no longer because the Blondie Hacks Magic Mug it's dark when cold, but when it heats up, the logo appears as if from nowhere. Science! And away we go. So I'm using lots and lots of cutting fluid, fairly low spindle RPM, and I just clamp it down until I think it uh, feels about right. This is just kind of a practice thing, and you can stop it and check if the neural uh, feels good. You're just waiting for the points to close up on those little diamonds. And I think that's got it. So now we can loosen this guy up and pull it away. And then just clean up the crud. And that's not too shabby. And after chamfering the edge of that knurl, I can come back in here and part it off. And it doesn't really matter where. I'm just kind of eyeballing what looks like a good distance. And then I'll measure it and make the other one the same. 
So I come in here and start parting, and it makes kind of a funny hum at the beginning as the parting blade is uh, running over the knurling. But then once we get in a ways, then I come back in with the chamfer tool, and I chamfer the back side of that. And this is going to save us a second setup on this part, because with brass, it's quite easy to get a good finish uh, with the parting blade. So it's unlikely that I will need to flip the part around when we're done. And Yahtzee. And as you can see, we've got quite an excellent finish with the parting blade, so we don't need to face it off again. All we have there is a little bit of a nubbin, and we can just uh, sand that guy off here in a minute. But I want to test the fit first, and that goes in there nicely. And let's see if it actually works. So I tighten that guy up, and yep, table is firmly locked. Then I loosen that guy up, table moves. So honestly, even just one lock is enough to hold the table, which is a good sign that uh, we have enough leverage there on these locks. So now we'll go ahead and make a second one. I see why we cut enough stock for two parts. So when it's time to make the second knob, we can just face the end off, punch a new center in it, pull the bar out, and carry on making another part. So anytime the stock is small enough diameter to fit through your spindle bore, you can make all your parts in a row, one after another like this, and it's very efficient. And in fact, modern CNC lathes have an automated way of doing this called a bar feeder, but here in the hobby manual shop, we are a human bar feeder. And we just have that little nubbin to remove that the parting blade left. So some WD-40 on emery paper will make quick work of this. And you just want to move this guy in a figure eight pattern because that keeps you from getting crooked while you do this. And with brass, this is very fast. If this was something more like steel, it's probably quicker to flip the part around and face it off. But uh, with brass, it uh, just, just takes a minute to do this on the emery paper. And I think that will do it. All right, we'll thread this guy in and see how we did. It's looking good. We've got one on each side. There's our new little locks. They work perfectly well. Just a, an eighth or a quarter of a turn is all it takes to loosen it. And they look very sharp, I think. And those handles will never be in the way. So thank you very much for watching. Please do check out my merchandise store, blondiehacks.com slash store. As always, your Patreon support is greatly appreciated. It's what keeps the lights on here. And we'll see you next time.